So you just got yourself some high impedance headphones and you discover that your current sound card is not quite powerful enough to drive them properly. Maybe things are too quiet, maybe you can't watch movies, maybe your new headphones just sound underwhelming. The thing is that the internet tells you that if you get a nice DAC and an amp combo, you're gonna fix all of your issues and everything's gonna sound amazing. The problem is that most of your budget went on the headphones and you don't have much more left to spend on such a device. Well, if that's the case, then you are in the right spot because I've just discovered this $25 DAC slash amp, which not only is very cheap, but it sounds really good for the price. It is designed specifically for 300 ohms in terms of impedance. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of these features and hopefully help you to decide if this is a great option for you. This is the Sound Blaster Play 3 USB DAC slash amp. And you can get this right now from the official website for $25 or even less if you catch it on a sale. Reading about it here, we can see that this thing claims to provide you with an instant audio upgrade from your motherboard audio, housing a powerful amplifier that will drive a whole range of headphones from basic mobile phone earbuds to gaming and studio grade headphones. The Sound Blaster family of products has been on the market for more than 32 years and over all of these years they produced some amazing sound cards. So this little thing, the fact that it's part of that family, it has a nice legacy to it and I don't think it will disappoint. Looking at it, the first thing that jumps at you is its size. While a usual audiophile DAC slash amp stack can take up a good amount of desk space, the Play 3 can fit inside your palm. The design is pretty simple and clean. You get a nice plastic body that's shiny, over which you see the golden printed Sound Blaster logo. The USB connector is nicely made, it feels good. And overall, the device gets some bonus points for staying classy and not going with a gamery aesthetic. In terms of functionality, things are again very simple. This device is pretty much plug and play. Just put it into a free USB port on your computer and you are ready to go. You can plug your headphones or your four pin headset in this jack and if you want to, a microphone in the other jack. Although you're ready to start listening because the operating system detects this automatically, this would be a great moment to jump into those settings and switch up the bit depth and the sample rate to the maximum supported values. This thing defaults to 16 bit 48 kilohertz, at least on my Windows machine, and it can take up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz. It is also a great moment to install the companion app, which does add some cool extra features as we'll see in a bit. But before that, let's talk about the most important question. Is this device capable of driving high impedance headphones? And if it can't, does it actually sound good? The answer is a definite yes to both questions. I pulled out some of my beloved wire dynamics that are 250 ohms and I compared the Play 3 versus my usual listening setup, a UMC 404 HD as a DAC and a Topping L30 as an amp. While very decent in terms of sound quality, this setup is very much on the cheap end compared to what's out there on the market. Even so, the price of these two devices easily adds up to more than 12 times the price of the Play 3. And the Play 3 definitely doesn't sound 12 times as worse. I think it sounds better than the audio interface on its own. It definitely sounds and works better than a built-in sound card from Realtek, for example. So this makes it, I think, the best way to spend $25 if you're looking to improve your high impedance headphones listening experience. So with this out of the way, let's dive deeper to see what sort of compromises you're making by not going with something a little bit more expensive. Looking at the spec sheet, we see what we pretty much already know. The fact that this device can power headphones up to 300 ohms, the fact that it can run at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. And we also see the weakest link of the chain. The fact that it has a signal to noise ratio of around 93 decibels, which seems a bit low, especially when we compare it to my L30 that has a 141 decibels signal to noise ratio. In simple terms, this signal to noise ratio rating is telling you how much of the device's output is noise compared to actual desired audio, or even simpler, how much hiss or white noise you're going to hear while using the device. All audio devices will output some hiss and this will only get louder the more we turn the volume knob up. Better and more expensive designs will sometimes boast better signal to noise ratio ratings. And for example, the L30, when you're using it, 
the noise floor is 141 decibels below the signal level. You shouldn't be able to hear much of a hiss because of this. A signal to noise ratio rating of around 93 decibels means that the noise floor is much higher in the Alpha signal. And this means that when you turn the level up, you are going to hear some white noise or hiss, especially when you're using some sensitive headphones, like for example, these Meze 99 Neo, or some in-ear monitors. But when using such headphones, you don't want to turn the level up because getting the Play 3 at 9 already gets you to a very comfortable, loud level. And even if you use it with high impedance headphones like the 250 ohms Bire Dynamics, which require much more volume, the hiss is barely noticeable. It falls way below the noise floor of the room. And even if you focus on it, you can't really hear it. So you can see that this seemingly not so good signal to noise ratio rating is a very small compromise to make, especially if things are good otherwise. And in terms of loudness, they are indeed. On my biodynamics, I would keep the volume at around 30 to 40% while listening to music, while watching videos or playing game. And if I really wanted to listen loud, I would maybe bump it to 50%. Any more than that, started to get painful, but if your ears are much less sensitive, of course, there's a lot more gain to go on this little device. When it comes to pure sound quality, things are also very good. Even if I turn up the volume, I'm not hearing any sort of obvious audible distortion. If we take away the L30 from my setup, the Play 3 does a better job in channel separation compared to the audio interface on its own, compared to the Realtek HD built-in sound card on my computer. So it's really hard not to like this little device. Remember how I told you about the companion app? Well, in it, you get some extra features, such as the SBX Pro Studio section, which adds real-time effects to the output now, this is of course subjective, but from an audiophile point of view, I think the only usable one is the crystallizer, which is pretty much a smiley face EQ. You also get bass boost, a compressor, a dialogue enhancer, and a surround effect, but these don't sound that good, especially when you're using decent headphones. I feel like these would be better suited if you were to use some crappy earbuds but this is probably unlikely in our usage scenarios. Going further, there's also a section where you can limit or unlimit the output power of the device. This is very useful if you're using it with low impedance sensitive headphones, as we talked about earlier, because you don't want to fry your headphones. It could also be useful if you're using the Play 3 to drive some speakers because you don't want to feed a hot signal into the speaker amp. So if you're using it with in-ear monitors, with anything that doesn't require a huge amount of power, make sure to limit it here. You also get some presets for various creative headphones for various phone earbuds and whatnot. In the mixer area, you get the option to tweak the output level and the channel balance, the playback output, the microphone input. You can also monitor the microphone through the playback output, and you can also tweak the level of this monitoring signal, which is very awesome. I'm really glad they added this feature. Speaking of it, this is a recording of an electric microphone plugged straight into the Play 3. And as you can hear, the sound is really, really good as long as you have a good microphone. There's no noise, you get plenty of game for this microphone, and you can also use a dynamic microphone if you want to. If you have a headset with a four pin jack, you can also plug that into the headphone out and use that microphone. So all in all, this device has plenty of features for all of your gaming communication, maybe for your calls, if you're doing work from home and so on. Getting back to the software, there's also an EQ section and the EQ is really good and allows for some extra further customization of the sound. And you also get the century old classic presets that you get with all sound card drivers. So it's it's pretty nice that it's there. You also get the option to use profiles. The software has four built in. You can create your own or import someone else's. And all in all, the software is pretty good. It's free of ads, of spyware, of malware. It adds extra functionality to the device. You can configure things that you can't otherwise. So I really recommend you to install it if you end up getting the Play 3. But given its universal audio driver, its plug and play capabilities, and the fact that it's so small, what about using it to upgrade the headphone out of a phone? Unfortunately, this is where I got a little bit disappointed because when I plug this into my Android phone, while everything sort of works, it defaults on the low gain setting. So there's not much of an upgrade there. I tried using the Sound Blaster app with Sound Blaster services, hoping that maybe I can switch the mode there, but the device doesn't get 
detected. I think it's due to the fact that my phone can't supply enough power through the LTG port. So it seems that this thing is great at upgrading computer sound cards. It works with Windows machines. It works with Linux machines, including your Raspberry Pis. It works with Macs. But if you try to use it with other devices with USB ports, such as tablets, such as phones, such as consoles, then your mileage may vary. However, for $25, this is really hard to beat. If you are in need of a sound card upgrade and think this is perfect for you, I included some Amazon links in the description below. And if you end up getting one and you're not using a laptop, you're using a desktop computer, I also recommend you get a USB extension cord and some double-sided sticky tape and you stick this to your desk on your left side because most studio headphones will have very heavy cables and you don't want them hanging awkwardly from your desktop computer. There are also links in the description below for these things. While browsing the internet looking for this, you might stumble upon the newer model, the Play 4. And that might be tempting because of course it's newer, it has a USB-C port, it has some buttons, it has some better specs in some regards. But the problem with that is that it's only half as powerful. It can drive headphones up to 150 ohms. So if you want to use this with your buyer dynamics, the 250 ohms versions, if you want to use it with your 300 ohm Sennheisers, make sure to get the older model specifically, the Play 3. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you did, maybe hit the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. But until then, you stay classy. I'll see you next time. My name is Andrew Danju. Thank you very much for watching.